Welcome back to another edition of Idology, your weekly deep dive into all things American Idol. This week we're celebrating that somebody's leaving the panel. I will remember you. Jula Badula? Yes. Yes, it is who you think it is. The rumors are true. The great Michael Jackson, you that church girl. The Lauren that we first saw in Nashville. I'm here with season six standout oh. Melinda Doolittle. Melinda, thanks for being with us today. I am not backing that one up. I, I refuse. I know. I can't make you do it. I think it's a tie between Scotty, James, and Lauren. Round one. He's one of the OG, so like I'm I'm kinda down with the OG. Yeah. Did I just say down with the OG? You did. Seriously, what is she on about? Quiet. She's just weird. Let's talk about top three week on Idol. And you know, I hate to sound ungrateful because I got the final two that I've been rooting for since like Hollywood week. And yet I want to start this episode off with a complaint, with a gripe, possibly a diatribe. Okay. Shall we begin? Why can't the producers of the show let these contestants be great? Why are they so interested in micromanaging every last freaking detail that they don't let a contestant's choice round happen, where we could have seen things that we haven't seen before and we could have seen these contestants at their absolute best. It's like you've tended to a garden in your front lawn, you have three prize-winning heirloom roses that are about to be in bloom, and then you throw a garden gnome that looks like Justin Bieber that's like this big in front of all of them. Why, Melinda, why? How long have I been saying this? We're like lab rats in an illegal experiment. At the end of the day, Mariah was kind of right. It is how their career is going to start, most likely, especially if they win, because things are going to have to happen so quickly that they're going to just be listening to whoever's around them and not have a lot of say. Jimmy even said during the results show, there are going to be people like me that are going to have very strong opinions on what they should do. <laughs> it's like Scooby-Doo <laughs> villain-esque. I did not care for it. If you think this has a happy ending, you haven't been paying attention. If we're playing devil's advocate, think about this. like. You can go to YouTube right now and recreate mm -hmm. your own third round of Idol. You can get Angie's You Set yeah. Me Free, which has 3.7 million Ooh. YouTube plays. Why would you deny your main viewing audience of 11 million people an opportunity to see right. that on a live stage? Why would you deny them that? <laughs> And then, I mean, I'm just and then saying. Cree Harrison has a song called You Would Have Wanted It That Way. It's an original song. Oh, it is. Uh, amazing. Challenge, viewers. It is amazing. Go to YouTube, type that in, try and watch that without a box of Kleenex. It is, I mean, it is. You would have wanted it that way. Candace Glover tweeted that given her druthers, she would have done an obscure Christina Aguilera song that was not a radio hit. It was on the burlesque soundtrack, Bound to You. She has a cover of it on YouTube that is, I mean, it is rated I for I mean. Can't you see? Why wouldn't you want that to happen on your show? Your ratings are falling, people are fleeing in droves, and you could have given them that and you didn't give them that. It's like going to a restaurant, you go to a five-star restaurant and they're like, here's some bread, more bread, bread, bread again, bread some more. And then as everybody gets up to leave, you're like, oh, can I take your order? Like, I don't get it. Yeah. I'm so mad. That's my secret, cat. I'm always angry. I really now am angry with you. I wish <laughs> that the judges, the producers, somebody, if they're not gonna let the contestants choose, then choose the best for them. Like, don't give Cree a pop song. Don't do these things to these poor girls that are just trying to win. All they wanna do is win and you're making it so difficult on them. That's why we get to results and it's anybody's game because everybody's like, I don't even know what happened last night. As they say, it's completely sideways, Faith. Let's talk about top three week performances. I kind of felt like everybody brought their B plus game, but I think we've got to start mm. with Candace and her final performance, because I think that's what got her to the finale. I don't know that it was Candace's like best performance that she's ever had. However, it didn't really matter because it was by far the best performance of the night. That song has been on a lot of Greyhound buses through the years and high school musicals. And, you know, it's been hanging out at the bus station <laughs> yeah. sometimes with the things that have happened to it. But she took it on a first class plane ride with like a gin martini, an extra leg room, and a deep <laughs> tissue massage. A time and a place for us. Her 
her treatment of the melody for me was genius because she stayed so true to it and then just added a couple of things in there that, I mean, only Candace can do. That said, no matter how tired she is or whatever's happening within the production or illness or exhaustion, she can't do another one. Part of the problem was that song can't be done in like 45 seconds, which it felt like it was maybe Thank that you. short. She doesn't have time to actually ramp up. Like you either start at 10 or you don't make it. I've never heard her be sharp like that. And it, I think it really was just adrenaline. I want her to be able to rein that in and I'm nervous for the finale because I mean, Talk about adrenaline. Like I need her to be able to focus on that pitch and just give us Candace. Let's talk about Cree because I felt like round one for her was just, it was brutal watching her try, actually not really try <laughs> with perfect. Perfect. I don't think that she took the time or maybe didn't even have the time perfect. to actually have that song and put it into her own like wheelhouse. I know she yes. didn't have time. I mean, it's the truth, but no. you know, if you're in the Hunger Games and Katniss can pick up three arrows and she just decides to pick up two and is like, I'll get the other one later, you can't do that. Perfect was an arrow that she left on the ground just cause she couldn't bring herself to do it or she didn't have time. I don't care, pick it up. No, I need you to care. <laughs> I need you to care. <laughs> Top three week is hard. I need you to care, please. <laughs> it's so hard. I'm like having like post-traumatic flashbacks at this moment. Whoa, okay, okay, don't freak out. The time that you don't have and the energy that you don't have and the voice that you don't have and the sleep that you don't have. I need you to care. Like there could be three arrows and you're so tired that you only see two. Like I, please care, please care. Okay, I'm sorry. You totally like, I had a flashback. I feel like sometimes as a crazed idol loony, you want fire in their eyes at all times. Cree just isn't, she's just not that kind of contestant. She's not a character. She's a human being. I will be the she's first to back. admit that I sometimes forget that. Now we see why maybe American Idol is not first on her list. That doesn't mean that she's not trying and that she's not giving it 150% because I believe that she really is. But I think that there are things in her mind that are just more important than, than having to win. Yeah. I kind of love that. Even yeah. though I'm not used to it on this show, I, I kind of love that. And I'm not mad that it's in our finale right now. Watching See You Again during her hometown visit when she just broke at the end it was like oh. emotional floodgates here I'll see you again. that might be why i missed how good here comes goodbye was here comes goodbye here comes the last time having to hear that and having to watch it before singing that song only helped her sing from the most honest place the first of every tear i'm gonna cry Let's be honest, for the finale, two voices that are just easily identifiable, sublime, mm. consummate professionals. If they're both on their best for the finale, I really think that we could end up with six performances that are just jaw droppers. I really hope that that's what we get on performance finale night. It's gonna happen, I believe it. Let's talk about Angie. How did Angie not end up in the finale? I'm still shocked. I think she was shocked. Shot in the dark, we can't lose. <laughs> Way back when we had to say our top two, we both said Candace and Cree, but then Angie just, the fire behind the her fire. And, and how much she wanted this. Like, it, it just, it broke my heart. I never loved you, never loved In terms of my musical taste and what hits me, and what I'm likely to buy post-show, Candace and Cree are my top two. That's the music that speaks to me, and I think we all have our personal taste levels that we bring in. But yeah. I've gotta say, like, Angie fought so hard that I was really disappointed for her. I agree with you. It's like, she really, she did earn yeah. a spot in the final two. Her Elton John cover, which on paper, I was like, oh, they're giving her that song? But she nailed that. Sorry seems to be the hardest one. I loved the Elton John cover. And I think that they were just so like taken aback that she didn't 
play piano on an Elton John song that they couldn't actually hear the performance. So was that hard for you to do without playing the piano? I loved that she didn't end up playing the piano. I think yeah. it was a smart move, especially because she didn't have time to learn it. I wouldn't have been able to have played it so well, uh, like learned <laughs> it in time. I think people forget that like when you're playing piano and singing, like you're performing twice. The thing that hurt Angie the most was that she closed with Maybe. I think Maybe was in a range that didn't allow her to ever get comfortable vocally, and I think Mariah hinted at it. It's pretty much up in a in quite a, a high key. At the end, maybe a half step would have saved her. Baby, we should stop pretending. It was at the top of her range, but she can go higher. She's capable, and possibly her voice was just tired. It's time to go. Really briefly, let's just talk about the exit of Randy Jackson. Pinch me. Why? He's stepping down after 12 seasons. Pinch me. It is true. I think it's time. Shuba the doula, yeah. Shuba the doula doula. But I want to know from you, Melinda, Shuba we've heard rumors doula. that Vox Shuba wants to clear doula. that table. Like, whoosh, anybody that you would want to keep from the panel going into season 13, or do you think a clean sweep is required? Especially if Randy's leaving, then, then a clean sweep would actually be cool. Let's see something different. I'd love to see Harry Connick Jr., I know. I know, I'd love to see Harry Connick Jr. in one of those spots. I loved Nikki early in the season. I think her reign at that table must come to an end. I think the toxic energy between her and Mariah became a huge distraction. Yeah. I think watching her tweet nasty stuff at Mariah doesn't help. Whether Mariah oh. is complicit in this battle or not, you just can't have a judge that's distracting that much from the contestants. You just can't. You know, Randy, I'm glad he's gone. Right. Mariah, this is clearly not a job that she enjoys or is good at. Let her go back to writhing <laughs> on a motorcycle, shimmying in her oh. yellow jammies. Honestly, like that's your body after two kids? Knock yourself out, lady. If they were gonna keep anybody, so I say, might keep Keith because I think Keith really yeah. gets and enjoys music. If there was anybody, I'd, I'd keep Keith. And my mom likes to look and, at him. Well, me too. <laughs> By my mom, I meant me. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Allison Bridge. And I'm Joel McHale. And subscribe to ENT TV. It's just ENTV for all your entertainment news. No, it's E E N T V. It's just E N T V, so whatever. It's E N E N T T V E. Unless it conflicts with any thing, channel or company we work for. I'm Allison Bridge. Signing off.